Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Britt Johnson, and we are here for another episode of First in 10, and last week we welcomed back Michael Gallup. This week, we gotta welcome back Neville Gallimore. How you doing? Hey, what's going on? How you on? feeling? I feel great. I'm happy to be back. Yes, well, we gotta get right into this because the people have missed you, okay? So we, we, gotta, we gotta talk about some things. So you were activated off of IR last week, so this was actually technically your first NFL game with full fans in the stands, no yes. COVID capacity restrictions. How did it feel? Man, it felt amazing. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it feels like I haven't played football in so long. Mm -hmm. I was just happy to be back on the field. I mean, seeing how our defense is going crazy, I was just happy to be back in the mix, for real. So, um, the defense has been super explosive. They were amazing last week. They've been amazing kind of all season, getting better and better each week. Uh, I kind of feel like you guys have been drinking like the Michael's Secret stuff from Space Jam, but like, what do you think is really the biggest difference between last season to this season? Um, I mean, guys just understand that, you know, guys are hungry. You know, we, we try to make a statement. End of the day, we understand there's a lot of people that always have a lot of doubt. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's just what it's about being a part of Dallas Cowboys. You know, we always got that that kind of that stuff on our head that everybody wants to be better than us. So we try to make a statement this year. That's all it is. And you guys have done that for sure. You actually got your first game back. You got your first sack back, really. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. congratulations on that, first of all. Um, I gotta know, during your rehab having that you've had and stuff, what kind of kept you going, kept you motivated? So when you came in this game last week, you just, it looked like you didn't miss a step. I know you said you felt like you haven't played football in a long time, but it didn't look like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously I can be quick to say, you know, my family, obviously you support for my friends, but really ultimately, you know, the guys in that room, man, it's just something about it. Even when I was hurt, just getting up and being a part of that D-line room and those guys still making me feel a part of the family even though I was hurt and I really appreciated that because you know kind of guy I tend to overthink at times and you know just seeing those guys still have my back even though I'm not out there I felt like it was only right like I had to I had to be there for the guys and and it, it really helped the process you know so I really I got to give most of my credit to them yes and I will say the picture of the game was definitely you and your girl when you went to the sideline yes, after yes, that was yes, so yes, yes, sweet yes, and yes, amazing yes. Yeah, um, I, I also that. on your social media I saw earlier this year that you got to be there for your mom's retirement, oh, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. that's dope. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, you got to be there for your mom's retirement. Now it's funny because she's retiring and you're kind of really just starting your career and your dream job. Um, what was your "Mama, I Made It" moment? My mama, I made. I would have to say it was the day that I got drafted. Um, Really just because I remember, I mean, short story or small story, probably my sophomore year of college, you know. Mm -hmm. At first, my mom, you know, both my parents born and raised in Jamaica, they really know too much about football. Yeah, yeah you feel <laughs> me? So, like, growing up, my mom, she watched kind of a little bit, but it wasn't until my sophomore year where, you know, she started to hear, like, my name, you know, being called even back home. Uh -huh. Like, you know, wow. She asked me, like, are you actually uh, are you are you pretty good bad? at you? I'm like, I'm, I'm not bad. And then, you know, we're talking and she was just like, do you really think you can take this all the way? I said, mom, you know, it's my sophomore year. I was like, give me three, four years. You know what I mean? And, and you know, I was the kind of kid, I don't really say too much or mm -hmm. ask too much of my parents. So I told her that she was like, okay. And then fast forward to the moment I got drafted. And then, you know, one of the first things I did was, you know, there's some promises I made to my mom and my dad and I said I was gonna get them right. So I'm not gonna touch, touch on that too tough, but you know, being able to do that, you yeah. know, just, you know, the financial support and stuff like that, you know, it was, that was big for me. That was kind of like my mom, I made it when I seen, you know, right. certain numbers hit my bank account I ain't never seen before. And I was able to get back to yeah. my parents and be like, hey, look, this is like a very tiny, appreciation for what y'all And now mama yeah. is retired, feeling good. Yes, yes, Awesome. Yes, yes. So if you, I know, you know, football is your thing. You are amazing at what you do. If you were not a football player, what do you think you would do? Like, what would your career be? I think anything involving just helping people. I want to say entrepreneurship. Probably would have been a coach or a recruiting coordinator, something like that. Yeah. Anything where I get to be some sort of light to other people or you know where I'm as long as I'm interacting you know being around a, uh, 
a large group of people just talking and just being me. I don't know. I couldn't really tell you what else I Well, I heard that you're a huge hockey fan. Do you think that you would be able to hit the ice? <laughs> Do you even know how to ice skate? You know, it's crazy. You're like, Canadian. I can skate, but it's kind of like like romantic skating, like, you know, glide and side Like a side. figure skater? No, 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 no. I'm not leaving my feet. <laughs> I can't speed skate, but like, you know, if we went on the canal, like Rio Canal, you know, I probably, but I can't really skate like that. Like, I don't trust myself. Listen, once COVID protocol stuff is all over and we get to do these interviews out and about, me and you are going ice skating because we, the people need to see this. It's going to be very embarrassing. You're the probably going to see. need to see this. Very unathletic when I'm <laughs> ice skating. Very. Well, I'm like Nancy Kerrigan. I can do turns and all that you kind see. of stuff. So I would love to like be able to look more athletic than a football player for once. You got it, man. I will give you all that power, I promise you. Don't you worry. All right, so it is the holiday time. Uh, Christmas is right around the corner. Tell me a holiday story, your best holiday story that you got. Uh, my brothers, forgive me <laughs> oh, no. for this. But I want to say I was four or five years old. And basically, I remember, I think it was Christmas. It was on a Sunday. Um, Obviously, you know, my family's born and raised in church, so we're going to church that mm -hmm. Sunday. I don't know what possessed me or what oh, I no. was going through, but I decided to get up at like five in the morning and, and, I feel like I know where this is going. <laughs> and open everybody's gifts. And I don't know why I was not a, I was Never. an aggressive kid, but I was like opening all my gifts, like playing with them aggressively, making a whole bunch of noise, surprise <laughs> everybody to sleep. But, you know, I, ended up, I think I ended up messing, I got like this, like, farmer truck or whatever type uh -huh. deal and I ended up like breaking that because I didn't have a screwdriver and I just said I need batteries I just did a whole bunch of childish stuff so obviously I went to bed and then all I woke up to my brother yelling like yo who opened our, <laughs> who opened our presents then I hear my other brother yelling Neville and then my parents come downstairs and you know they had a nice little talk to me and then when we went to church you know, everybody was wondering why my brothers are so upset. And then they're like, well, Neville's brewing the Christmas. <laughs> and I'm, I don't know. I couldn't even tell you what my motive was. I think I was just extremely excited that it was Christmas. And oh, I didn't no. want to wait till the set time that my family wanted to open the present, which was like eight. I said, I'm going to get up early and open it for everybody. I thought I was doing a good thing. But it turned out. <laughs> Literally, the bad. Grinch that stole Christmas is on the set today. Favorite movie, by the way. Clearly, that maybe movie. that's what motivated you. Had you seen the movie before I you did that? I think so. I think so. And I felt like I was just doing what needed to be done. But <laughs> I promise I'll make it up to y'all. I promise. Oh, that is great. How old were you during this time? I, like I said, I think I want to say it was either four or five. Okay. So or like still young. Probably between four and seven. I don't know. Yeah. I can't even really tell you. Mm -mm -mm. What a shame. So what are you most afraid of? What am I most afraid of? I'd probably say heights. What? <laughs> heights. I'm oh, scared. I thought you meant like hikes. Like, no, yeah, no, no, like, no, no, no. Of I'm, course you wouldn't hike. I am afraid. I'm scared of heights and cockroaches. Oh, yeah. They're just nasty, yeah, right? Yeah, like I might freeze up if I see one. Because if you see one, you know there's a bunch around. Exactly. They ain't by themselves. Exactly. They don't travel alone. Exactly. <laughs> All right, um, speaking of not being alone, say you're having a Super Bowl party, right? Let's just say a Super Bowl party. Okay. Um, you can invite three celebrities. Dang. Who would you invite to your party? Three celebrities? Yes. Right now? Past or present. Hey, let's resurrect some people if you want. Okay. Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I would invite Drake. Okay. Rick Ross. Yes, Rick Ross. And Pop Smoke. Oh, okay. R.I.P. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, that's Pop good. Smoke. So this gets me to my next question then, because you named all musicians. If you had one song that would play anytime you walked into a room, <laughs> what song is that going to be? Uh, what is your like moment, your song, like this is me? You know what, I, I think it will probably Again, I think just because I was so heavy on Pop Smoke, uh, I think it'll probably be like Pop Smoke, uh, Shake the Room, or Dior. Okay, can you sing a little bit of it? Rap a little bit of it? What? I know you know the words. You gotta know the words if it's your song. How's it go? He said, he starts it off by saying, said I'm never lacking, always pistol packing with the mother medicine, we gonna send him to heaven. Wait, 
There we go. You know, you kind of have like a Rick Ross kind of sound to your voice. I appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. Rick Ross, my, did, you, did you just, uh, have you listened to his new album? I only heard one song, listened to Outlaw. Okay. My favorite, I think, is the Richer Than I Ever Been. You know the rose, eh? Yes, I am. This okay. is, I'm so excited right now because every time I've done this show, yeah. I never know the, the people the guys are talking about. Like, yeah. I'm just like, I have no idea who that guy is. Rick Ross. I know Rick Ross. That's live. Salute yes. to you for that. That's yes. live. That's what, live. I get one point finally. Yeah, that's, live. that's live. That's live. That's live. All right. So our last question, um, we're going to have to stand up for this one. Okay. Because we're going to get a little active because we got to do a little bit of moves here. You know, Dorrance Armstrong, Carlos Watkins have both got touchdowns. Okay. We're in the end zone. So... Let's hit the end zone. All right, I guess let's do it. All right, so touchdown, 50 yard touchdown in the end zone after a forced fumble. Neville Gallimore. Ooh, ooh. Okay, uh, okay. Oh. I love it, I love it. Well, That's thank cool. you. Yes, that was great. Thank you so much. Oh, Air wow. Okay, wow. That's how we're gonna do Whatever. it today. Okay, no thank you so much for joining us on First and no 10. I'm Britt Johnson, Neville Gallimore. We'll see y'all soon. Peace.